we're going to talk about the stability of alkenes. Uh, molecules will have different levels of stability. The higher the stability, the more resistant that particular compound is to undergoing a reaction and the more likely it is going to be uh, formed in a reaction when which there's more than one possible outcome. So this is why this is important to us. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about alkene stability. So what I'm going to do is first just tell you what is the more stable alkene, uh, alkenes, how we decide that, and then we're going to talk about how we det uh, why this comes about. Okay. The more alkyl groups that are on a double bond uh, causes the double bond to have greater stability. So let's just look at these four alkenes down here. They all are one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. You can go through and count each one of them and you'll see they all have six carbons. But you can see they're isomers of each other. Not cis-trans isomers, but they are uh, constitutional isomers. So if I look at this one, this is one hexene, this is two hexene. Here, the double bond has only one alkyl group on it. If I look at this double bond, it actually has two alkyl groups on it, a methyl and a propyl. If I look at this, this is two methyl, two pentene. This double bond has one, two, three, four, excuse me, three groups on it. That, that wasn't a fourth group. And if I look at this compound, this is two, three, dimethyl, two, butene. If I look at this compound, one, two carbons have one, two groups on each one. So there's one, two, three, four alkyl groups on this double bond. So one alkyl group, two alkyl group, three alkyl groups, and four alkyl groups. The order of stability is based on how many alkyl groups are attached to the double bond. So if I look at this, this one right here, it only has one alkyl group. So of the four, it's the least stable. If I look at this one, it has two alkyl groups. So it is next least stable. Then this one. And then the most stable of all of them is this. So if I were to order stability, what would be highest stability? One. Next highest, two. Next highest, three. And last of all, four. This is important because when, if let's say in a reaction, both of these two compounds can form, uh, what's going to happen is the more stable one is more likely to form. So when this compound or this compound can both form, what we find is primarily the more stable alkene forms. Likewise, if I'm looking at a double bond in reactivity, and if I have both a double substituted and a mono substituted alkene in one molecule, what one will react first? Well, it's going to be the one with the lower stability. So the monosubstituted where does the stability come from? Faster. Well, if you really want to understand exactly where it comes from, you have to look at anti-bonding orbitals. And right now, uh, you're not really familiar with anti-bonding orbitals, but what you we find is the anti-bonding orbitals can overlap with an adjacent alkyl group sigma bond. You see, how, this is a methyl group on this double bond right here. This methyl group has sigma bonds between the carbon and hydrogen bond. There are electrons in here. The anti-bonding uh, pi orbital is adjacent to it and it allows, when it's lined up like this, it allows overlap of these electrons with this empty orbital. The anti-bonding orbital is empty and an empty orbital along with a full orbital can overlap and cause an overall energy drop. And this is called hyperconjugation. You're not, I'm not going to ask you to explain where the uh, stability comes from, but that I, can ex that I have explained it to you helps you understand where it's coming from so that 
you're not just saying more substitution equals greater stability. Uh, now you can kind of say, think, oh, the electrons are feeding in here, and there's greater stability. There is an additional from that. thing to consider besides just the amount of substitution. When the amount of substitution is the same, for instance, let's look down here at these two compounds down here. You can see that this is a cis compound and this is the trans compound. These are isomers of each other. They both are disubstituted, so with regards to substitution, they have the same amount of energy. However, this one is cis and this one is trans. The cis groups actually have hydrogens that are sticking out like this, and sometimes this, this ethyl part of the group, this chain flops over, and they can bang into each other. So whenever you have two groups on the same side, they have some steric strain. This compound has less steric strain, actually uh, very little steric strain because it is trans-oriented. This has a high amount of steric strain because of the cis-orientation. Remember that this is in the same plane as this. So that really causes these to uh, bang into each other directly. Okay, so this has steric strain, this does not. They're both disubstituted, so the one with steric strain has higher energy, this has lower energy. Again, if both these compounds can form in a reaction, which one's more likely to form? This one. Likewise, if this both a cis and a trans alkene are in the same molecule and they go to react in a reaction, the cis will react faster than the trans because it's less stable, as long as all other things are equal. With bulky groups, it's even more important. If I look this T-butyl group, it's going it to really, this is a, a very strained compound because this, these methyl groups on the end of the T-butyl are going to be constantly banging into each other and this compound will be highly strained. This one has that strain removed because they are trans to each other. So uh, when we're comparing cis and trans, the trans is always more stable than the cis. If we're comparing E and Z isomers, you have to look at the size of the groups. Of course, the groups that are, have the two largest groups E to each other uh, um, are, is more stable, and when they're together on the same side, Z, well then those two larger groups are less stable when they're on the Go same side. Go ahead and try this problem. Rank the following alkenes as an order of stability. Now the numbers that are shown are not the order of stability. Those are the number of compounds. So put them in order of stability. Okay, if I look at these compounds, I will see this is disubstituted, this is monosubstituted, and this is tetrasubstituted. The tetrasubstituted is going to be the most stable, and the monosubstituted will be the least stable. So the order of stability is 3, 1, and Cycloalkenes can be formed. Putting the alkene into a ring can cause an increase in angle strain. For instance, if I look at cyclopropane, it was already very strained. Uh, and the, the need for a cyclopropane is to have a 109.5 degree angle, and so putting it in cyclopropane uh, it caused what we call angle strain or ring strain. If I put the ene in, now that same 60 degree angle that, it, that the cyclopropane requires is now even more strained because this carbon with one to three areas of electron density is going to need sp2 hybridization and 120 degree angle. So the difference between what it needs and what it's getting is even greater. So this is a highly strained ring, as is cyclobutene. Now, if I look at uh, cyclohexene, it is not very strained at all. Uh, if you can accommodate that 120 degree angle, because it can go into what's called a half chair. So the large rings can flex and and you can have the 120 degrees that you need to accommodate it. If you have even larger than the hexene, 
Then what happens is the rings can flex even more because those carbons uh, can, uh, the, the sigma bonds can twist until they have the, the degree of 120 degree angle for the double bond. Cyclopentene has a little bit of strain, but again, it's not too bad. You can make a cyclopentene regular, uh, relatively easily. Here's an example of a large ring that can allow either cis or trans. Cyclooctane can either be cis or trans. And uh, why? Because the compound uh, can flex a little bit and allow this to occur. You cannot have a, a trans cyclohexene, though. Only the cis cyclohexene is allowed because the ring's too small to allow trans. Now, you can actually hydrogenate an alkene. Let's look and see what hydrogenation means. This right here is an alkene. We can do an addition reaction of hydrogen onto the compound by using a catalyst palladium. And when you do, hydrogen is added to the compound to make the alkane. Either the trans or the cis will give the same compound. And this is called, caused, called hydrogenation. This is an exothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction, heat is being released. Because this is more stable than this, the trans is more stable than the cis, this compound, the cis, will release more energy when it drops down to the butane through hydrogenation. This energy diagram down here shows this. This is the cis energy and this is the trans energy. Trans is more stable, so it's lower in energy. The cis is less stable, so it's higher in energy. When they go through hydrogenation, they both give butane. Notice there's a greater drop in energy for the cis than for the trans. What is that due to? That's due to the strain of the two groups having some steric interference, and so more energy is released. Remember that less stable compounds have higher energy. Keep that in mind. Have, and so when they drop down to the same reactant, they release more energy. So go ahead and look at these three compounds. Again, the one, two, three has nothing to do with the order. It's just to label them. Rank these according to the amount of heat released upon hydrogenation. Notice they're all isomers of each other. And so we're dealing apples with apples. Order the amount of heat released upon hydrogenation and then restart the lecture. Okay, if I look at these three compounds, this is the most stable, so it's going to have the lowest initial energy. This is the least stable, so it has the highest initial energy. Upon hydrogenation, this will release more energy than the other two. This will release less energy. So the order is 2, 1, 3.